Hey there, Four States. This is Luke Taylor, and welcome to a KNEO Community Connection. Happy 2024, and we're so glad you're all back with us. Um, have a conversation with you today with Marvin Morris. He, he is an area engineer with the Missouri Department of Transportation, and uh, he's going to be chatting with us today because residents of Neosho might be aware. They might not, but there is a big construction project coming to Highway 86, and so he's going to tell us a little bit about that. And uh, hey, Marvin Morris, thanks for taking some time with our listeners today. Ah, uh, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, so uh, I know a lot of people have probably heard the news, but just in case they haven't, what's going to be going on here on, at Highway 86 in Neosho soon? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're doing a cost share. We're partnering with the city of Neosho, and we're going to construct a roundabout. So at the intersection of 86 and Hammer Road, uh, we'll be basically phasing in a roundabout with staged construction. Yeah, and that's that's pretty close here to the radio station itself. And so I know a lot of us are probably going to be driving by it a lot and seeing it here over this. Uh, how long is this process going to take? I know it starts on January 15th, but about how long is it going to take? Right. So the actual contract documents say that they have until November 1st. That's the completion date of 2024. Okay. So, and like you, you threw out a date right there. So just to catch you up, uh, you know, weather delays are a real thing around this mm. area. Um with the cold temperatures and the snow that we just had, you know, it already pushed the start date back a week. Mm. Uh, so, like, we're actually thinking maybe next Thursday starting the project. So, um, like I say, we have multiple phases how we're going to put the project together. But the first phase would be shutting the north side of the intersection off and constructing that side while we shift everybody to the south side. So, if if everything goes as planned, um, I think they have about 45 days for the the first section, about 55 days for the second, say 10 days for the last phase. But if it's, it's so touch and go because you don't really know what you're going to get into when you start building something. There's a lot of un- unforeseen. There's a, you know, once you tear that existing concrete up, mm-hmm. uh, the soil that's underneath, you know, depending on what we find in place, uh, is it usable? Do we have to do any um, modifications to what's there? Uh, it could stretch out the, the time frame a little bit, but I mean, if everything goes well, we'll definitely beat that November deadline, and I'm hoping for early summer. Okay, yeah, well, that hey, that sounds a lot better than than going until November for sure. Um, so you mentioned they're working on the north side and then the south side. Um, so do, do you do you anticipate that traffic is still going to be able to function as um, that to be able to get through that area all throughout the process, or or is there going to be a period of time where people have to go a different route? Well, for us. One of the main priorities was that we would keep traffic flowing as well as we can. So, obviously, you know, if you're familiar with that location, you have two eastbound, two westbound, and center turn lane through that area, right? Mm -hmm. Um, What we're proposing to do is well in advance of the area that we're actually doing the work, we're going to shift traffic. And so, like, for stage one, we'd shift everybody to the south. So, you're going say if you're going eastbound, you'd have two lanes that reduce down to one lane. And they continue eastbound. If you're going westbound, you'd have two lanes to reduce down to one lane, shift that traffic to the south side of the intersection. So you're going to have head to head traffic on the south side. Mm -hmm. So you'd have one lane in each direction still open. And that would be the first phase. So um, and during that time, we're obviously building everything to the north. So the north side of Hammer would be closed Mm -hmm. and all that concrete would, you know, everything would be taken out and then new placed in with the new geometrics. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And so we appreciate you taking care to be able to let people still travel through that area. And and what is it that you'd want drivers to keep in mind as they're coming upon work zones? Yeah, so we, we do have it well marked. You know, we have a traffic control package in all directions as you approach this. Uh, the main thing is, as with any work zone across the state, you know, we have workers, which, you know, it's our families that are out there working. Uh, be patient, slow down, you know, Put your phone down, pay attention to what's going on around you at expe- all times, but especially through the work zone, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, you need to be patient. The gaps, you know, if you think about your gap acceptance, what what are you willing to do whenever you're trying to get out into traffic, right? So if you're waiting to get into traffic, be patient. Don't just, you know, force your way through. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's pretty much it as far as, you know, just be mindful of the traffic control that's out there. We will be changing and we'll be putting messages on the boards as different phases are coming and there will be guidance well in advance of what to expect. So if we're ship, say if we're dropping a lane and merging two lanes into one and then from there shifting the traffic after they're in one lane 
to the opposite side of the intersection. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just be mindful. We will have messages in place, but, you know, slow down, take time to read them, give, take turns, give, you know, be courteous with all your fellow drivers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, uh, if you just tuned in, we're talking today with Marvin Morris. He's a MoDOT area engineer, and uh, he's just given us some information here about the construction project that's going to be coming very soon to Neosho as this uh, new roundabout is being put in right there on Highway 86. And so, um, yeah, uh, I guess uh, before we go today, um, I, the the reason that they're putting this in is because there, there's been a lot of traffic, I know, in that area Um the, uh, ever since they, they put in a, a, a Love's gas station over there and there's been a lot of semis right. in the area. I, was, I know I've, I've been out there before and seen a lot of near wrecks. And so I drive it I drive it a few times every day and I know it can get pretty hectic over there. Is this roundabout? Is this going to help um, traffic? Uh, is this just is, is the purpose of it to make it safer so that we we don't see so many of those wrecks? Yes. And um, but, so basically the idea behind a roundabout, obviously, if you think about a a traditional intersection, you'll have right angle accidents. So if you had a four way stop or a T intersection or even a signal, you know, if you're through movement and the opposing direction that's going 90 degrees opposite, you know, when you have that 90 degree angle accident, you know, the, the chances of a severe accident happening are higher. So like by building a roundabout, you change the type of accident. So if you think about it, when you're coming in, we have what we call splitter islands, and they will kind of divert you off at an angle as you enter the roundabout. So per- the people that are already in the roundabout circulating in the traffic, as you come up adjacent to those people, if somebody failed to yield the right of way, it'd be more of a side swipe. So it may not be as a severe accident. Plus the fact we are slowing traffic down through that area with mm-hmm. this new roundabout. So people will be going a little slower. You'll have yield control to get into it. So there should be gaps. So the people won't have to wait as long. Um, it, it should be better for everyone once we're finished. Yeah, yeah, d- definitely. We'll work to reduce fatalities, and not that we have a lot, but you know, there are there have been some uh, on eighty six before. So we we definitely want to make it as safe as possible. And so, right. Th- thank you to the guys out of, at Missouri Department of Transportation who are working on getting this done. And we just want to remind everyone to please be safe, drive slowly as you go through that work area, um, because it's not ju- it's not just about not getting a ticket, but there's lives at stake if you're uh, rushing trying to get er, get here and there, and uh, there's people out there working on the roads. So we ask everyone to to be. Please be safe as you go through the work zone. And uh, we want to thank Marvin Morris for taking a little bit of time today and sharing a lot of information with us. Hey, sir, uh, thank you again. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, just to let everyone out there know, you know, if you do have questions, you can uh, call 188-ASK-MODOT, and we'd like to hear your input. Okay. Well, hey, we appreciate that, too. So, all right. Uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to the KNEO Community Connection. For 60 years, Crowder College has been empowering students to soar to new heights. From agriculture to education, to business, sports, and the newest technologies, Crowder always has something interesting going on. I'm Adam Winkler of KNEO Radio. Join me each week as I talk to a different person from Crowder College about what's been happening and what's coming up next. It's the insider's guide to all things Crowder. Subscribe today to the This Week in Crowder College podcast, available from the Sky High Podcast Network.